Hey guys, this is the second reading of our cover to cover project, Men Reading the Bible, here in 2024. Um, I just want to start out by saying that uh, thank you for those that have jumped on the Facebook group already. This project that we're doing is uh, is part of a dream that Karma and I've had for several years, and that's to start a Christian coaching business and uh, have just put in a lot of time and effort and resources um, money <laughs> into getting trained to do um, to do biblical counseling and biblical coaching. And want to do that this year and really see this come together specifically for men, giving men the tools they need to lead. And, um, and this Bible reading is, is a, this is a free project and a free group that we can jump on and, um, and pray for each other, encourage each other, motivate each other. And, uh, let me stop and pray for us right now as we get into God's word. Dear father, I think, uh, for, think of anyone that's listening in right now, uh, no matter where they are, when this is, that you would um, give them hope, hope as men to move forward, uh, like the Bible says, either either dreams or visions for the future. God, you have called us to be providers and protectors. You have called us to join with you, to be um, creative and to worship you through all that we do in all of life, whether it is officially in, in church ministry or whether it is um, in business, whether it's in our home, whether it's us um, for any single man, that uh, we are called to worship you in all that we do. And so, Lord, I pray that 2024 will be a year of, of hope-filled worship, um, that men will will know that the only place that we can put our trust and have our faith is in you, Jesus Christ. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are, um, you are the man that uh, has has lived perfectly. You died a perfect death. You rose in perfect power, and then you come beside us and you encourage us to. Um, to move forward in faith. So I pray that that would be, I pray as we do this uh, Bible reading project, that you would bless us um, with self-discipline that comes really spirit-filled discipline, that you will give us understanding and that you'll give us the wisdom to know to how to apply this, uh, not only in our lives and on our, our, our own souls and our own decisions, but for those we're responsible for. So uh, lead us right now in the reading. And uh, we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. This is unedited, you guys. And uh, last time I um, I kept calling I kept calling the word herb, like herbs and spices, herb with the H. I don't know if you're in England. Maybe that's how it's uh, pronounced in England. But um, I should have said herb. Uh, but uh, I noticed also as we're moving forward from chapter seven on today that there are some long, difficult names. And so um, I'll do the best I can. But like I say, there's plenty of audiobooks out there, Bible reading. But this is a, a group project where we're just men coming around the word of God, push and play, and then jumping on the group where we can uh, we can pray for each other and encourage each other. So with that said, let's get into Genesis chapter seven. And I will push my timer, and we will shoot for as close to 20 minutes as possible. So there is that started in Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female, of fowls also, of their air, of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him, and Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in 
and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean and of fowls and of everything that creepeth upon the earth, there went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the, se in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah, and Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in, and the flood was forty days upon the earth. And the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all, that, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and and of cattle, and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. Chapter 8 And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of the heaven were stopped. And the rain from the heaven was restrained, and the waters returned from off the earth continually, and after the end of the hundred and fifty days the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen, and it came to pass, at the end of forty days, that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand, and took her, and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth. Of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee, bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. 
And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing, as I have done, while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Genesis chapter 9 And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth. And upon all the fishes of the sea, and to your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things." But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man, and you be ye fruitful, and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah, and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark, to every beast of the earth, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and that shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward. And they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years, and all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. Chapter 10. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were the sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, 
and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tyrus, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Togarma, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan, and the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Raama, and Sabtika, and the sons of Raama, Sheba, and Dedan, and Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Calne, and the land in the land of Shinar. Out of that land went forth Asher, and builded Nineveh, and the city Rehoboth, and, Ka- and Kela, and Reason between Nineveh and Kela. The same is a great city. And Mizraim begat Ludim, and Anamim, and Lehabim, and Naphtuhim, and Pathrusim, and Kasluhim, out of whom came Philistim, and Kafturim. And Canaan begat Sidon his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvidite, and the Zemarite, and the Hamathite, and afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, or Gaza, as thou goest, unto Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adma, and Zeboam, and unto Lasha. These are the sons of Ham after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Unto Shem also, the father of all children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder. Even to him were children born, the children of Shem, Elam, and Asher, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram, and the children of Aram, Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mash. And Arphaxad begat Selah, and Selah begat Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided. And his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan begat Almodad, and Seleph, and Hazar Mavath, and Jerar, and Hadoram, and Uzal, and Dikla, and Obal, and Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havit, and Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan. And their dwelling was from Mesha, as thou goest unto Sefer, a mount of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Chapter 11. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build a city for a tower, whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore, the name of it is called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was an hundred years old and began Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad five hundred years and begat sons and daughters, And Arphaxad lived five and thirty years and begat Selah. 
And Arphaxad lived after he begat Selah 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And Selah lived 30 years and begat Eber. And Selah lived after he begat Eber 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and thirty years and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg four hundred and thirty years and begat sons and daughters. Peleg lived thirty years and begat Reu. And Peleg lived after he begat Reu two hundred and nine years and begat sons and daughters. And Reu lived two, two and thirty years and begat Serug. And Rio lived after he begat Serug 207 years and begat sons and daughters. And Serug lived 30 years and begat Nahor. And Serug lived after he begat Nahor 200 years and begat sons and daughters. And Nahor lived 9 and 20 years and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah 119 years and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now, these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah. The daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with him from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran, and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. Chapter 12 Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and to a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. (coughs) Excuse me. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And guys, I got to get a drink. Excuse me. All right. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sychem, unto the plains of Moreh. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel. And pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold, now I know thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, that thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. The princes also of Egypt saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken unto Pharaoh's house, and he entreated Abram Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. 
And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me she was thy wife? Why saidst thou she is my sister, so I might have taken her to me to wife? Now therefore, behold thy wife, take her, and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. The end of chapter 12. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's pray. Uh, Father, once again, I pray before you that you would um, bless each one of us as we listen to the reading of your word. Wherever we are in our life, God, I pray we can plug into this great story that we can hear your heart, that we can see your holiness, but we can also see your amazing compassion. Uh, we can also see your call for um, you to want mankind to to enter into your into your story, into your creation, and to multiply and to bring dominion over your creation. Help us, Lord, each one of us, uh, wherever we are, uh, single, married, ministry, vocationally, or not a uh, business employee, wherever we are. I pray for any man that has a, a dream and a vision, and I pray for any man that may be discouraged and just feel um, suffering and pain and God, uh, stuff that a lot of times we as men don't uh, like to talk about. I pray that uh, you would bless them with your spirit and comfort, that you would bring um, someone into their path to uh, encourage them and to give them wisdom and instruction and advice that they need. Lord, I pray that we can understand that as men, you um, give us your identity by faith. Oftentimes we, we want to strive to prove ourselves, to uh, prove who we are, try to be real men, try to man up. And Lord, we, we just... Uh, we need you and we need your identity and we need to be able to rest secure in uh, the position and the identity that you give us by faith so that we can um, bless others instead of be self-focused. Help us to, uh, to look at the man that we shave every morning and, uh, and lead, lead that man before we try to lead others. Only can, through the Holy Spirit can we do that. So we lift these things up to you in Jesus' name, and amen. All right, guys, it has been good to read the Word of God together, and uh, I will see you next time. Um, and once again, jump over on the Facebook and share prayer requests and any motivation. And um, yeah, appreciate you for uh, staying this uh, to the end. God bless you.